Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Grant and I'm the host of Remington Graphics and today we're going to be taking a look at some basic soft body simulations in Blender and how we can make some really awesome looking renders using just some spheres and a cool course for it to go through. So while this tutorial will be focusing mainly on the simulations itself, we will briefly go over some materials at the end just to give you a good idea of how you can make this look really awesome. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with a fresh Blender file and get right into it. All right, so we have our scene set up just with everything in it. We can go ahead and delete this all. Um, I'm just pressing A twice and then delete. Let me turn on screencasting keys here so you guys can see what I'm doing. So what I'm first going to do here is just to get our physics set up correctly, I'm going to add a ground plane. I'm going to scale it up eight times just so it takes up our entire plane here. It's just a thing I like to do. And next, what I'm going to do is add a UV sphere. Now, I don't want to change any of the settings down here, even though this is a rather low poly sphere. We could actually change these numbers down and see what it looks like, just 16 and 8. Eh, maybe. That actually, that actually doesn't look too horrible. So I'm going to go ahead and change these settings down to 16 and 8 down here. If you didn't do that and you already clicked off your sphere, I just add a new one and change the segments to 16, rings to 8. Um, and that'll give us a nice low poly sphere, which should give us some pretty fast simulations. So I'm going to change the smooth shading on just so it looks a little bit better. And we're going to move this up a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and come over into the physics tab over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, click this. By the way, if you don't see this uh, physics tab right here, what you can do is you can click with your center mouse button. You can scroll back and forth up here. Um, but you're going to click on the physics tab, and we're going to go ahead and add soft body physics to our sphere. And on the ground here, we're going to change it to a collision object. Now, if we go ahead and play our simulation right now, you'll notice that our sphere just kind of chills here in the air. Um, that's because this setting, or this, I guess, uh, feature called soft body goals are on. Basically, it's pinning um, different vertices. So what we can do here is uncheck this, and it will actually fall and will <laughs> crumple up at the moment. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some resistance and resilience to the ball so it bounces back up and it has a little bit more liveliness into just turning into a flat plane of glitchiness. So in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and open up the in our um, physics tab over here, we're going to go ahead and drop down the soft body edges selection. And we have a bunch of different settings here. We have pull, push, damp, plastic, bending, and length. Now, um, what we uh, want to do here is we want to change the push and pull up to 0.9. And what these will do is it's basically the resistance of the object to stretch or to compress. So a good example of this in the real world would be thinking about a rubber band, for example. If you take a rubber band and you grab it by both ends and stretch it, it has a little bit of resistance in it. And that resistance is the number that we put in there for pull. And the, the harder it is to pull apart, the higher the pull number will be. And that's what pull is. And push is basically just the complete opposite. If you were to take uh, an inflated ball, for example, or a balloon, or to try and push together, the more resistance it gives, the higher the number. So if you have a really low number, it's just going to squish. If you have a really high number, it's going to have a lot of structure to it. So that's why we change these up to 0.9 to give it a little bit more uh, resilience. And then what we'll also do here is change the, well, if, actually, I'm going to leave the dampening at 0.5. But what that will do is it just adds a little bit of friction to the uh, compression and release. Uh, 0.5 is a pretty good number to start with. Plastic will determine the amount of permanent deformation. So for example, if you were to take a hammer and hit it against a foam block, it would leave a permanent dent in the foam block. Whereas if you were to take a hammer and hit it against a piece of really thick rubber, like a tire, for example, uh, the tire would just maintain its shape. It would basically compress when the hammer hit it and then return back to its original shape afterwards. So if you want the pla if you want that permanent deformation, the uh, foam-like effect, you want to have a high plastic setting. But if you want a rubber-like effect and a lot of resilience, you want to keep that plastic at zero or another very low number. Uh, you can play around with it if you'd like. But for this kind of simulation, especially with the balls, you definitely want a low, very low plastic number. And then we also have bending. And what bending will do is it'll add another extra layer of resilience. Um, and we'll look at the description here, bending stiffness, exactly that. So uh, the vertices will be less likely to bend. I'm gonna change this all the way up to 10. Uh, we might change this in a little bit depending on how our uh, sphere reacts here. But let's go ahead and play this now. You can see it barely even bends at all, especially if we look from side view. You can see that it looks like the bottom compresses just a little bit right there and nothing else much. So that means we obviously need to change our settings down. So I'm actually gonna change the bending to eight instead of 10. 
And it's still not doing much, so we'll change push and pull down as well to 0 0.8. I always find it's better, there you go, now you can really see it's starting to get a little bit of bounciness to it there. I always think it's better to start with a high number and work your way down than a low number and work your way up because it's a lot more interesting and it gives you a better idea of what you're working with. So I'm actually gonna drop the bending all the way down to five and we'll see if this, there you go. So that gives us more of a squish there. And I'm gonna change these down to uh, push and pull down to 0.6 as well. And we'll see, we'll see, there we go. So now we're kind of getting that um, that squishy look that we wanted before. It looks almost like, um, uh, not. I, wanna, I don't wanna say a water balloon because it still looks a little bit more uh, stiff than a water balloon, but um, you get the idea. So what you want to do is you want to play around with these settings, the pull, push, and bending, and if you want to play with dampening and plastic, like here, you can see with the plastic, it kind of flattens it out on the bottom. So that's what plastic does. Um, but if you want to play with those settings, uh, be my guest. I'm going to find something that I think looks good, which is just a little bit softer than this. There we go. So now it almost looks like a droplet of water. Not quite, but you can see like the jiggle of it. Oh, I just love the look, it's so satisfying. And then, once you find settings that you like, what we can do is um, we can come up to the, not the particle settings, the modifier tab, and we can go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier on top of it, and that'll give us the extra smoothness that we need in our sphere, so it actually looks somewhat decent. So the physics calculations happen on a very low poly model, and then it even it smooths itself out later. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and either add more of these. So if we wanted to stack these on top of each other, we could do like three of them. Keep in mind these have the same physics settings, but watch what happens now. We drop them and they all go straight through each other. That's because they don't have, uh, they aren't a collision object. So in order to make these actually collide with each other, we need to go ahead and select them and turn on the collision uh, in the physics menu for all of them. Uh, or if you just, if you haven't duplicated them yet, just do it with the first one, Oop, my phone's buzzing. And now you'll see that they collide with each other and it looks like this one still didn't collide. Or never mind, they're colliding. They're just uh, a little bit goofy with that. And you'll see that the physics simulation speed slows down like remarkably. And uh, that is kind of uh, expected considering that um, we're working with a lot of polygons and they're all interacting. So. There you go. There we, oh, there we go, it was just a glitch. That's what was happening. So now we can see that our spheres basically bounce off each other and make a cool little falling, I don't even know what to call it. Um, but there we go, we have our very first sort of um, soft body physics simulation already set up. And of course you can use different objects with this as well. Uh, but remember the higher the polygon count, the longer it's gonna take to simulate. So keep that in mind while doing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually create something a little bit more interesting for them to go through, uh, just using some basic geometry in Blender. Um, actually, we'll go ahead and model it, just for the heck of it. And of course, you can add other collision objects as well. For example, if I wanted to add a sphere in here for these to kind of, I don't know, skim off of, like this, um, and I wanted to change it to a collision mesh right here, now these will balance on top of the sphere instead of going down to the other thing. It'll give us a different result um, from what we had before. <laughs> All right, so I just finished building this giant course and my balls successfully run through the entire thing. Uh, if we play this here, we can see that it's basically a race to the bottom. That was the general concept with this whole thing, um, after I got started at least. So we can see that they kind of go down. I did change the physics of the balls a little bit more. Um, I made them a lot more squishy. I dropped the push and pull down to 0.4 and the bending down to 4. And now we can see that they happily roll along in a race to the bottom where they try and get into this little hole right here. Um, so we can go ahead and watch the rest of this just because it's a little bit satisfying to watch. It is a little bit slow, so I'm going to be speeding things up a bit, but it looks pretty solid at the moment. And you can see they get stuck there, but they figure their way through. And we can see this ball wins, even though it kind of almost gets shoved out of the bottom here. I think it does slip down though. Yeah, there we go. So it does slip down to the bottom and becomes the official winner of the race to the bottom. And you can also see that I extended this timeline down here a lot. Um, and if you just extend the timeline, the physics simulation won't actually go all the way to the end. What you have to do is you have to make sure your uh, your one of your physics objects is selected. Uh, actually, each physics object you have to do this for. Uh, you come down to the soft body cache uh, settings in the physics tab, and you change this end frame right here. And in this case, it's 2000, because I was going to simulate all the way to 2000, but uh, it ended around uh, 1150. 
so there was no need to. So once you have your simulation run and you have everything that you need and it looks good, what we can do now is click Bake All Dynamics in the soft body cache. And what this will do is it'll take every single physics object in the scene and bake it so that the animation will not change no matter what until we free the bake. And it's important to do this because if you save this file, close it, and reopen it, then all of your animation is gone and you've just got a bunch of balls sitting there or whatever you're using in this case. Um, so it's very important to make sure that you do this, and it also uh, reduces the chance of error. And now you can see we're completely done baking. The progress bar at the bottom is completely red, and we're ready to move on. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the materials that we can use to create some really awesome looking balls, I guess. And we'll also go over something to put on the uh, ground plane here, in this case, it ground rectangular prism. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start off by creating a new material. We'll just call this um, ball mat, I guess, ball material. And what we're going to do is delete this diffuse shader. And I'm actually going to use my shader here, my PBR shader. If you guys don't have my PBR shader already, you can download it. There will be a link down in the description. It's payhip.com slash Remington. It's absolutely free. You can download it, use it in whatever you want. Don't even need to give credit. Uh, but you can use this if you'd like to. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the, uh, actually we'll add a glass shader as well first. So glass, and there we go. I'm going to spread this out a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and mix these two together. If you don't, guys don't have a Node Wrangler, what Node Wrangler basically allows you to do is hold Alt and right click and voila, we have them mixed now. And it's a, it's a really neat add-on, it's free and it's actually built into Blender. Uh, so I'd recommend enabling it. So if you press Alt and right click, you can mix two things just like that. So we have these two mixed together now, and what we'll do here is we'll mix them based, uh, actually hang on, this is supposed to be subsurface scattering, my, my, my bad there, uh, plus CC by the way, that's important because it'll have an extra clear coat on top of it. Um, so let's go ahead and set up the glass material, or actually, you know what, our glass material is pretty much set up here. All we need to do is change the roughness to something small like 0.01, uh, that way we can get the idea that there are some imperfections there even though there aren't necessarily actual imperfections. Now we'll come back to color on both these in a little bit, um, but for now, actually we'll just leave the color as white there. But for now, let's go ahead and leave the color on the PBR shader as red, and we'll leave the surface roughness as one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the clear coat reflectivity here and change this to 0.1, and the clear coat roughness to 0.01, which kind of gives us the same effect that we uh, had with the glass up here to give those, those little imperfections. Now for the color, what we're going to do is we're going to add a mix RGB uh, node here, and we're gonna plug that right into the surface color. And we're gonna choose two colors that are, well, that accent each other well. So we'll go with like a, uh, a purplish color here, maybe desaturate a little bit here. Um, and actually we'll drop the value of that as well because it's a little bit bright. And then we'll choose a nice reddish pink color. It's very vibrant, just like that, um, to get some nice contrast in there. And we'll mix these based off of a, noise texture. So plug the, plug the factor into there. We'll leave the scale around five, change the uh, detail up to three, maybe four. We'll change the distortion up to eight for this example. And now if we go ahead and switch into rendered mode over here, we can see that, well, it doesn't look like much because right now we're using the, um, uh, the just as the surface color, we need to plug it into the subsurface scattering color as well. And um, actually for the time being, we'll go ahead and just bypass the glass here and just look at the uh, material itself. So you can see there, uh, there's not much contrast. So I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more contrast out of that. Drop the value of this a little bit more. There you go. So now you can really see, the, uh, not really, but you can start to see the, the uh, difference in between these two. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the noise texture and plug it into the displacement down here. And the displace displacement is just a pass through. Uh, so we can pass it through over to here. And you can see it's very, very strong. So I'm going to add a converter math converter over here, change it to multiply, and change the strength to 0.2, so it kind of kills a lot of that really harsh uh, bumpiness. You can change it to 0.1 if you want a really kind of smooth looking sphere, however I like kind of having this distorted look. And then we're gonna go ahead and drag the glass back into this. Um, so now we can see that we have this funky looking ordeal going on over here. But um, we're gonna go ahead and kind of solve this weird whiteness by mixing these via a uh, Fresnel. So, or Fresnel, I don't know what to call it. Um, but if you guys don't know what Fresnel is, you should look up some basic uh, PBR tutorials and it'll explain it pretty well. Blender Guru did a good job of explaining it. So if we plug in the Fresnel, we can see that it um, 
for one completely turns the thing to glass and just on the outside is where we have our uh, our subsurface scattering so I'm actually gonna swap these so the glass is on the outside instead and I'm actually going to boost the IOR the index of refraction up to about two next what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add a color ramp converter just like that and I'm going to drag the black value up a little bit and we'll also drag the uh, white value up a little bit and what this will do is it'll make the uh, the sphere kind of have this outer shine to it so it looks like it's transparent on the outside and of course you can play with these values as well if you want the glass to penetrate more inwards and then just have the ball in the center or we can move the white value back up and you can see the subsurface scattering kind of pushes outward and it's just kind of a neat effect uh, that I like if you don't like it you don't have to use it by any means um, but let's go ahead and make a really quick material as well for the uh, ground plane here we're gonna keep it nice and simple here we'll add a new material we'll call this ground delete the diffuse shader add a or, uh, I'm gonna use my PBR shader for this one as well so we'll add that again and we're just gonna hook up dielectric to the surface we're gonna change the surface color to just a little bit of an off-white just like that and uh, well, I, th I, th I th that's already looking pretty good. I might change the roughness to something like 0.25 or 0.2, uh, just to give it a little extra roughness. But now if we move this down, we can see, actually can't really see it. There you go. You can see those very solid reflections. And that's all we need uh, out of this material. It's just a nice, simple PBR material uh, that we don't have to worry about very much. So this is the final render. It looks pretty good if I do say so myself. And of course there are a lot of little errors and stuff like the quality and the, the alpha channels aren't perfect and everything like that. Um, but that's just because it was more of a demonstration purpose as opposed to being a full on render. If I did do a full on render that was meant for something like YouTube, I definitely would have put a lot more work into it and make sure it looked good. Um, but for the purposes, this looks pretty good. So anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you all learned something new, and if you did, be sure to leave a like down below so others know it's helpful. And if you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to hit subscribe so you're getting notified when I upload new videos. I am going to be trying to upload more often because I know I haven't been uploading very recently, uh, so hopefully that will be coming soon. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Adios.